we will move forward with our next talk. And that's going to be given by Mr. Soma Olas from the Budapest University of Technology and Economics in Hungary. That's and good. they are going to be talking about simulation of runway electron dynamic. So good afternoon, everybody. My name is Soma Olas, and I'm from the Budapest University of Technology and Economics. And in this presentation, I'm going to talk about the runaway electron modeling in the European Integrated Modeling Framework. I'm going to give a short introduction into the concept of runaway electrons. I'm going to show you what the Integrated Modeling Framework is. Then I'm going to show you the advantage of this approach. Runaway electrons in plasmas can appear because the friction force experienced by the particles is reduced as the particles gain velocity if they are above the thermal uh, kinetic energy. This means that if an electric field larger than some critical electric field is introduced to this uh, particle population, it will create a region of net ac acceleration above a critical velocity uh, boundary. Any particles inside this runaway region will accelerate into the into relativistic uh, energies, hence running away. One of the main methods for runaway electron generations is the dry cell generation rate. This, this essentially means that the thermal uh, electrons diffuse over this critical boundary in relativity space into runaway region. Another uh, generation method is the avalanche generation, where already runaway electrons collide with thermal particles, giving enough energy to both of them end up in the runaway region. The European Integrated Modeling Framework aims to enable the coupling of different codes by creating a da the standardized data structure and an universal access layer to this data structure. This enables the different codes to communicate through an universal language, and they can be integrated into graphical workflows created by Kepler. One such workflow can be is shown here, where this is a runaway electron test workflow uh, developed in this framework. There are three different uh, runaway electron codes implemented into this uh, workflow, the first being the runaway indicator. It's a simple code to indicate when the physical parameters during the simulation favor runaway electron generation. If this is the case, then runaway fluid can be used to give a conservative estimate uh, about the runaway electron population. Runaway fluid uses analytical formulae to calculate the dry cell and avalanche uh, generation rates. And it calculates the runaway uh, density and the contribution to plasma current from runaway electrons. If a more accurate uh, calculation of runaway electrons is required, then the Norse kinetic code can be used. Norse calculates the electron distribution function by solving the kinetic equation with a nonlinear collision operator. This code was developed at Sharmers University of Technology in Sweden before it was integrated into this framework. One of the main workflows in this framework is the European Transport Simulator, or ETS shortly. It is a one and a half D uh, transport simulator code. And inside this, we have a step-by-step -step approach for runaway electron modeling. The first step, runaway indicator, indicates when runaway electron modeling is needed during the this simulation, and then runaway fluid can be used uh, to estimate the runaway population. ETS with runaway fluid and runaway indicator has been benchmarked against the GO code, uh, where an energy sink was introduced to, to create uh, physical parameters favorable for runaway electron generation. Uh, the runaway population was calculated and it was benchmarked against the GO code as shown on the right, side, right hand side here. We can see a good agreement for both the runaway uh, current and ohmic current for both of the codes and also the electric fields look similar in the uh, spatial and temporal distribution for both of the codes. Another scenario which, for which ETS was used recently is a massive material injection simulation where uh, argon impurity was injected into the plasma to create a disruption uh, during the thermal quench phase of the disruption, the runaway electron generation was uh, calculated. In the remaining slides, I'm going to show you the main plasma profiles uh, coming from this simulation. On these slides, all the horizontal axis is the minor radius of the plasma. And on the top left, I'm showing the electron and ion temperatures. In the middle, I'm showing the densities for both electron and ion. On the top right, I'm showing the current distribution and also the Q profile. While on the bottom, I'm showing the effective charge of the plasma. In this simulation, we are going to inject some argon impurity from this edge of the plasma and expecting it to cool down as it goes inwards. And while this happens, also the ionization of this argon impurity will cause a peak inside the electron distribution. Uh, hopefully this will create runaway electrons at the end of the simulation. 
halfway through the simulation, we can see that indeed the ionization of the argon impurity created the peak as it uh, traversed through the plasma. And also the ionized impurity increased the effective charge of the plasma uh, by a great degree. Uh, on the edge from where the argon impurity has been injected, we can see a drastic cool down of the plasma. But also both the electrons and ions are cooling down in the center. This is coming from the energy exchange calculated by EPS. As the plasma is cooling down, it causes the electric field to diffuse inwards, which in exchange pushes a current spike to the center, which in the end will create our runaway electron uh, current. At the end of the simulation, we can see that the electron and ion temperatures have settled on 4 electron volt and 10 electron volts respectively, which is indeed a very cool uh, temperature for plasmas. They are not actually plasmas anymore. We can also see that the electron density and the effective charge of the plasma have not settled yet. They are still uh, going down as uh, recombination occurs. We can see two smaller spikes in the current distribution of the plasma. These two spikes are coming from the uh, runaway electron contribution of the plasma. Otherwise, it's a spike uh, current distribution in the center of the plasma. On the last slide, I'm showing you the runaway current as a function of the minor radius and time at the end of the, at the simulation. We can see that in the end of the simulation, we indeed have a, a significant runaway current in the center of the plasma and a bit more outwards, where this corresponds to the two spikes shown in the previous slide. In summary, I would like to say that uh, the runaway electron modeling with this integrated modeling approach is working and it has an advantage of also self-consistently uh, simulating the plasma evolution. Uh, for this, ETS was benchmarked against Go code with great agreement and also a thermal quench simulation was run with promising results where the plasma cooling was uh, modeled with impurity injection. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Shoma, for the interesting talk.